Uh, I think this is the only thing left to do, right? Let's summon the War Council. Operations. Oh my god, what is this? You now have access to missions. Mission operations take time and bring the Inquisition resources and rewards. Only one mission per advisor can be active at a time. Some missions have a preferred type, which results in less time required when undertaken by the associated advisor. Missions may also provide different rewards, depending on which advisor completes them. Alright. Fuck me. <laughs> a bit complicated. So many systems. Jesus. Uh... Forces, endurance training fit for a soldier, but secrets. Cassandra spoken to you about my new recruits. They are not your recruits, Commander. They're ours. Secrets, developing keen eyes and an inquisitive mind. Uh, connections, training in the fine arts of persuasion and inquisition, improved coordination and infrastructure. Uh, right. So we can pick some of these? Underworld knowledge? Oh, at the bottom, Inquisition Perks 2. I guess we can... So we have two to spend, I guess? How did we get these two? Not sure. Uh, detailed study of underworld customs and their brutal but practical applications. Opens up new dialogue options related to criminal activities. And grants plus 50% XP for each codex entry unlocked. Okay, that's huge. Plus 50%. I mean, you know me, I click every codex entry. I hope it's retroactive, because we've already unlocked a lot. Uh, a methodology developed by an Orlesian blade master and used by chevaliers to analyze their own performance in combat. Grants a 5% increase in XP earned from killing foes. Okay. I feel like we should immediately put both our things in that. Like, the more XP we get, the better, right? Uh, and then we can't get any of the rest. Oh my god, there's so many. Lord Barand. What's this? Lord Barand of Ferelden has pledged his sword and those of his forces to the Inquisition. The addition of these forces bolsters the Inquisition's forces. Reduces by 5% the time it takes for Cullen to complete operations. Oh, this is the dude that we helped. Huh, okay. Uh, training a proper, proper weight distribu distribution significantly increases resistance to being unseated. Huh. And again, uh, increases maximum focus. What's focus? Second tier focus effect can now be triggered. And master focus. I have no idea what that is. Is that just something we haven't been told yet? Harsh environment training can be dangerous but will harden anyone. 10% increase to all defense. Okay, that's huge. Uh, more healing potions. That would be good, I guess. I mean, we've never run out yet, but maybe eventually. Uh, mage schematics. Reverse engineering their robes and staves will provide new rare schematics. And same for those. Okay, interesting. Well, both of the two that I can get, I feel like would be good to get. So let's see what else there is. Uh... Arcane Knowledge. Detailed study of magic and the places and creatures that interact with it. Open up new dialogue options related to the Fade or Arcane Studies. Oh wait, this also grants 50% XP for each Codex entry unlocked. Huh. Interesting. Um, optimal Cutting. Detailed studies show how to get maximum usable harvest from each plant. 10% chance to receive extra herbs with each harvest, no thanks. Eagle-eyed. Training in spotting where the pattern breaks in nature or in civilization. Grants a significant increase to the discovery range of the searching action. Oh, God. I mean, I kind of want that. Uh, bolster the number of researchers working to study those who stand against the Inquisition. Additional 50% XP for each foe studied, including those already completed retroactively. So the fact that it doesn't say it here means that you probably don't get it retroactively there. Shit. Because it specifically says you do here. Uh, training gear and experience working with master locksmiths needed to tackle the toughest and most ingenious locking mechanisms. All rogues can open masterwork locks. Okay, well, we want that for sure. Requirement four points in this category. Right. Forward scouts. Uh, the Inquisition scouts can receive training to cover a wider area and identify items of interest to the Inquisitor. Reveals additional landmarks and points of interest on the maps of every area. Requirement capture any keep. I have captured the Dragon Age keep. And, and completed it. Yes. Uh, col gain a collection of herbs. Don't care. Uh, witty Ritz. Oh, this is the person that was with the mage, right? Scout Ritz is under Leliana's command and has proven herself adept at intelligence gathering, employing her wit and charm to coax secrets from her targets. Uh, and that's a 5% reduction again. Lovely. Uh, connections. So this will be... Uh, what was your name again? Fuck, I've forgotten her name. Don't remember. 
Uh, nobility knowledge. Detailed study of politics, rhetoric, and those who wield them to best effect. Opens up new dialogue options related to nobles and politics. Uh, grants 50% XP for each codex entry unlocked again. Oh my goodness. Okay, so we could get... If you get all three of those, that's 150% additional XP per codex entry. That's huge. Um, thanks to a few well-placed acquaintances and a carefully crafted reputation, merchants will pay the Inquisition 10% more for items sold to them. Okay. Uh, a favor for a favor. 10% uh, discount on goods, right? Elite clientele, buy and sell 15% better. The rare stocks. Uh, leverage the organization's reputation to purchase a shipment of rare and valuable raw materials for crafting. No, thank you. Uh, exacting buyers. Uh, buy a shipment of high quality materials. Uh, highest quality materials. Uh, merchants eager to win favor from the Inquisition will give access to special offers for rare inventory. Requires five points in the category. Hmm. And where the Inquisition deigns to spend its coin, people take notice. Messen merchants will send messengers when they have sales at their stores in hopes the Inquisitor, Inquisitor will put in an appearance. Ha! <laughs> That's funny. Uh, and Inquisition. History knowledge. Uh, oh my god, it's another 50%. <laughs> you can get, You can get so much XP out of Codexes. Opens up new dialogue and options related to history and the Chantry. Grants an additional 50% for each entry found. Uh, and Teven Tailors are famed for their ability to hide pockets seamlessly in garments. Oh shit. Few words the Inquisitor's friends to the north and its forces can carry more items in the field. Increases inventory capacity by 15. God, that's huge. And then another 15? Ooh, that's tempting. Uh, more potion slots. Uh, gain a combat ability point for the Inquisitor only. Huh. That's all of it then. Hmm. Well. Hmm. I feel like the most important stuff is the XP stuff, right? Early on at least. Like the earlier you get this, the more it matters in the long run. Especially if it's not retroactive. Like I need to get them them now kind of thing. So if we're about to go to Valroyo, then uh, new dialogue options related to nobles and politics would be a good thing to have. So let's get that. Um, and then the other options are like it's all 50% XP, but then it's Dialogue options related to criminal activities, eh. Dialogue options related to the Fade or Arcane Studies, definitely interested in that. What was this one? Uh, History in the Chantry. I'm more interested in Fade and Arcane Studies, so let's get that one. Okay, so we've got 100% XP bonus for each Codex entry unlocked. And with two more perks, we will have 200% XP bonus. And more dialogue options. Obviously, dialogue, dialogue options are always great to have. Uh, cool. Cool. Right. Uh, can we do anything over here? Address the Chantry in Val Royale. Is this the main mission? Is that why it's got the green thing above it? Uh, the Red Heart. Such is the reach of the threat that the Inquisition has received offers from all corners of Thedas. Perhaps this offer should not come as a surprise. A letter in flowing script. We find our kin in strange places. Though we know not if you will carry tradition with you, we would see if you carry pride in some form. For the wounded sky is all of ours, whether belief is shared or not. Let all see this, and convey yourself as we should be. What? I don't understand what that is. <laughs> what, what? What is it actually requesting of us? It requires time, nothing. Josephine, that's her name. Josephine, we'll take every care with such a boon, our associates will see to it. Leliana, I'll quietly make certain nothing interferes with the arrival. Cullen, that fucking picture looks like he's on fucking drugs. Our soldiers will ensure the creatures arrive safely. Uh. Go, go, Gadget Josephine? The red heart has arrived and it can only be described as inspirational. Oh, is it a mount? Is it that horse? Right, sure. <laughs> uh, Flames of the Inquisition Charger. Is this just DLC stuff? We have garnered the attention of the finest armourers of the land, and they would not see our message conveyed un unadorned. They offer a mount that reflects the flames of the Inquisition. It is, by all accounts, magnificent. A uh, block letter note follows. We would send our best, and you will know it when you see it. It is much at, it is much at home in par parade as on the battlefield. 
Let all who stand against you see that they stand against a force, a cause. Our skill is yours, those of the hammer. Uh, Josephine, you're doing well. Keep going. <laughs> it is magnificent. All right. Uh, oh, this is investigate the shards. Power cost four. We have 37, so we should be able to do that, right? Uh, Sister Leliana. Oh, that's weird. We can't do two of these things. We can only do connections. Huh. Uh, Sister Leliana, the shards acquired by the Herald of Andraste are unlike anything I've encountered. Though ancient in origin, few have been recovered before now. The breach m must have disrupted whatever ancient magic was concealing them from view. I have heard of one scroll that mentions the shards. It belonged to the Circle Tower in Markham. However, after the circles fell, the Sorel family sees many of the valuables as compensation for donations made after their mage son was taken there. They intend to sell the scroll, along with everything else, at private auction. Hastily scored below, Josephine, if this ancient magic is tied to the breach or can offer some advantage against it, we need to know. Can you get us into that auction? So secrets and forces not participating. Connections. A few well-placed rumors should incite bidding wars on other items, leaving the scroll for us. Sure. Uh, Sister Leliana, with thanks to Our Lady Ambassador, I was able to study the scroll. The reference is vague, but it implies a connection to a temple, possibly Elven. Ooh. I followed the lead and believe one such temple stands in an oasis on the western approach. As to what may lie within, I cannot say. Reports of the place are cut off or have pages missing. I have yet to find a reliable first-hand account. Perhaps our soldiers can provide a better one. Enchanter Renaud. Renaud? Oh, new area unlocked. Oh, would you like to gather your party and venture the f to Forbidden Oasis now? Huh. Uh, not now, because there is other stuff we can do here. But, very cool. So that is, that is done, I guess. And we can fast travel from this map. Okay, cool. Uh, this is the main mission. I'm not doing that yet. Uh, oh my god, there's so much stuff here. What the fuck? Uh, Scout the Hinterlands is completed. Uh, we read that, didn't we? Yes. Yeah, that was that was the thing. Like, that is literally what we were sent there to do. Was Commander Cullen asked me to make inquiries of Master Dennett, the retired horse master. Uh, we've una been un unable to get through to him. So I was like, our primary goal was to go to speak to the horse guy. And we went there and he's like, I'll help you, but only if you clear out this very high level rift that you cannot defeat. Like, it's, I, I find it so strange. That that is what we were sent to do, and we literally cannot do it because we are too low level. But whatever. Uh, rescue soldiers missing in Ferelden. That costs eight. Uh, build watchtowers. We need to do this. We need to do this. Refugees in the hinterlands face threats from bandits, demons, apostate mages, and Templar deserters. Building watchtowers in the area will help Inquisition forces ensure the safety of refugees and farmers. The appropriate building sites have already been marked. Requires 57... Is that, like, real life 57 minutes? My soldiers will have those towers up in short order. That takes it to 45. And she's even... She takes it to an hour. <laughs> there are nobles near Redcliffe who will gladly help the Inquisition if we make them an offer. My soldiers will have them up in 45 minutes. Uh, I mean, sure, I guess. But, like, why... Why make it take real time? <laughs> this reminds me of fucking mobile games where it's like, Oh, Clash of Clans! Oh, you want to build this little- You want to build this little house? Well, that's going to take, like, fucking 24 hours, you bitch! Or you could simply pay, just cough up a little bit of money, just get out your wallet just a little bit. It's only like- It's only like two quid and we'll do it instantly. And then- But everything is, Oh, if you just pay two quid, we'll do it instantly. And it's like, if you actually go in for that, then suddenly you've lost hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. <laughs> like- that's what this reminds me of. But there is no, like, pay to skip. Like, thank fuck, because that would be fucking horrendous in a full-priced game. Uh, but, like, why is the timer there? I don't know. Seems weird. But sure. To work? Oh my god, it actually, like, you can see it count down in real time. That is so weird. I guess I'll be back in 45 minutes. <laughs> uh, the Bog Unicorn. Oh, is another fucking... What is with this? Let's just, what, I guess I guess this all just came with the Game of the Year edition. Uh, we have received an offer of assistance. I am unnerved, but not opposed. It is not the first strange promise we've received, and like will not be the last. The Inquisition has need, and we would provide. We have in our possession a mount of noble spirit, fallen in battle against rage, returned to life by the boundless urge to run and serve a worthy cause and noble master. 
Prove what your followers already believe, that your reach is beyond this realm, that even the forces of the Fade are your ally, that death is no barrier to victory. The Collective. Sure. Let us begin. And hooray, it's lovely. Okay, great. Um, so that's eight cost. We've done that. That's in progress. Gather coin. Up until now, Inquisition forces have had the benefit of the Chantry's deep coffers. Now the Inquisition is forced to seek out its own sources of revenue if it is going to grow further. Trade in and out of Haven is limited at this point, but there are various opportunities to earn coin, provided the Inquisition is willing to focus its efforts on the matter. 57 minutes for Leliana. It would be a simple minute. Simple minute? Simple matter to collect secrets and sell them with nothing traceable back. Or 48 for Josephine. Trading in favors with merchants and the nobility is my specialty. It would. It could earn us a great deal if we're careful. Okay, I'll think about that. Uh, what else is there though? Because we're like using them. Uh, we're using up their time. Uh. Oh, that's me. Contact Clan Lavellan, right? Clan Lavellan offers greetings to the Inquisition and wishes it well in sealing the breach that has opened in the sky. While some Dalish clans hate humans and wish nothing to do with them, Clan Lavellan has always dealt fairly with all and wished only for peace. That said, we have on occasion been forced to defend ourselves from those who saw us only as potential victims. It has come to our attention that, our, uh, that a member of our clan is being held captive by your Inquisition. She went to the Conclave only to observe the peace talks between your mages and Templars, and we find it highly unlikely she intentionally violated your customs. If she has been charged with a crime, we would appreciate hearing of it. If not, it would ease our concerns to hear from her, to know that she remains with the Inquisition of her own will. We await your reply, Keeper Istime Thoriel Lavellan. That's funny. They, yeah, I guess they wouldn't know that the Inquisitor that presumably they'd have heard about is me. <laughs> Uh, the Dalish re respect deeds, not words. Let my elven agents deliver something the clan needs as a show of good faith. 14 minutes. Or, your people must be approached carefully. One of our elven scribes could deliver a message and share news of the Inquisition's fair treatment. 15 minutes. Alright, well, 14 minutes is better. Go, go, gadget Liliana. Let's see what we have. Um. Hard in Hightown 3, Varric's Revenge. What? Ruffles. I need a favour. Actually, let's call it a loan since I'll pay it back. I got a letter from my editor in Kirkwall today. She tells me that Hard in Hightown 3, the re the repunctioning, appeared in print from an Antivan printer a couple weeks ago. I'll give you a moment to contemplate the horror that is that title. I had my contacts in the Merchants Guild look for the author a couple years back. The best they could find out after spending a couple hundred gold was that Piral Belenforth is a pen name. I could have told them that for free. You've got contacts with the Antivan print houses. Maybe you could find out more than the guild. Uh, Cullen doesn't participate. Leliana can't do it, obviously, because she's busy. But if this author has evaded the Merchant's Guild, the Crows might be a better choice for investigating him. Or, uh, oh my god, that's almost four whole minutes difference. I could ask a friend in Antiva City to look into this matter, I suppose. Uh, could do. I mean, does it? Is it just like, is it just going to get us approval with Varric? Is that the only thing that matters? Not sure. The Black Emporium. Voices on the wind speak of a new power abroad in the world. Inquisition, they whisper, an ancient name restored. A memory rekindled and transformed into a blaze of hope. I hear the whispers and summon the fires of the Inquisition. So this is this is the Black Emporium from Kirkwall, right? Uh, here in the depths beneath the City of Chains, yes. Countless mysteries hide in shadow in anticipation of the light. Come, the Black Emporium awaits. Xenon the Antiquarian must spend his days composing melodramatic invitations to his establishment. I imagine being stuck in a chair for centuries leaves one somewhat lacking for entertainment. This particular message was hand-delivered by a cloaked figure at twilight, precisely as the sun disappeared beneath the peaks. My men spied the courier lurking about our outer gates for at least an hour waiting for sunset. A servant under the command of some very specific instructions, I assume. That aside, I would encourage a visit to the Black Emporium. The Antiquarian's hoard is legendary. Only those he deems worthy ever lay eyes on it. The champion of Kirkwall received an invitation once and reported, among other things, a strange mirror that could transform even flesh and bone. Yeah, that's the, the, like, what do you call it? Make yourself look different thing, right? Who knows? We may uncover something that aids in the battle against Corypheus? What? Wasn't that the name of the Magister dude from the, uh, Legacy DLC? I'm confused. That dude, like, fully died. I'm trying to think if I'm missing something. Am I missing something? There's no other person called Corypheus, is there? 
Hmm. That is weird. Why would it say that? Like, there's no reason for it to say that because he's not even in this game. Like, that was a... Hmm. Like, it's not like it could just be a typo. That's strange. Hmm. Uh, forces, you'll need passage across the Waking Sea to Kirkwall. That is easier arranged. Power cost zero. Fucking have it. A ship has been secured. Be wary of what you find in the Black Emporium, Inquisitor. I have heard many frightful tales. Uh, no. Not yet. Uh, scout the Storm Coast. The Tan of High Ever. Address a nobleman's concerns. Herald, your Inquisition says it's for order against chaos, reason in darkness. If you stand by this, come forth and drive the heretics from my lands. They claim to be refugees, but I've seen elves and apostates among them. Filthy savages, tearing at our roots. Um, our monarch refuses to send forth armies, and my own knights were decimated at the Conclave. I require your aid to return peace to my lands. Prove your loyalty, and I will see you richly rewarded for your faith. Praise the light, Lord Kildarn of Ferelden. Uh, Leliana would take 19 minutes. We can take advantage of his raving. My spies can harass the refugees into moving somewhere else to win Lord Kildarn's favour. Uh, Cullen, we could send a few patrols, but I'd prefer they help the refugees, not this Lord Kildarn. Also 19 minutes. Wow, Cullen, that's the first base thing you've ever said in your entire life. And Josephine... I thought Josephine would be the best, because it's a nobleman. And she's, like, the one that talks to nobles, but she's the slowest. Ah, yes, Lord Kildarn, a pariah even among his peers... Let us send a polite refusal and nothing more. Ah. She just refuses to do it. Whereas these guys... Hmm. I see. So it's not just it's not just whoever does it faster. It's actually like these are straight up different outcomes. Liliana would get them to move to get the favour. Josephine would tell him to fuck off. Right. I wonder if that matters. Hmm. I mean, this one sounds like we'll get money. Prove your loyalty, I'll see you richly rewarded. So I assume we'll get cash if we do it Leliana's way. Uh, Josephine, uh, we might make an enemy. I don't know if I want to do that. So I guess I'd have to wait until Leliana comes back. But that's ages, right? That was like 45 minutes or something. Man, I'm not, not a fan of this fucking timer thing. Uh, the Tern of High Ever. To whom it concerns, the Tern of High Ever wishes to convey our deepest sympathies on the death of Divine Justinia V. Five. The Most Holy was incomparable in her wisdom and dedication to peace, and we had high hopes that her conclave would succeed. We will hold a vigil in High Ever in remembrance of Justinia, and cordially invite the Inquisition to attend. Sincerely, Tern Fergus Kuzland. Uh, we know that name. Why do I know the name Kuzland? Uh, I don't remember, but I definitely know that name. <laughs> hmm. Uh, we have a number of Ferelden officers. We could send an honor guard. That would be 11 minutes. Uh, I know Tan Kuzland, and I knew Justinia. I can't attend, but I could write to him. 14 minutes. Well, that's not going to be good enough. We want to attend. Uh, and 15 minutes. Why is Josephine always so much slower? We, we should send a diplomatic attaché and some of the Templars who knew the Divine. Uh, I think Honor Guard would be best, but that requires Cullen. And we can't do it because he's busy on another fucking mission. Ah, this sucks. This sucks fat fucking dick. Seven minutes until that's done. Uh, this is a long one, right? That's 35 minutes. Man, this fucking chokes on the cock. This is awful. Scout the Storm Coast. Ferelden has not seen significant Grey Warden activity since Darkspawn attacked the city of Amaranthine ten years ago. That was ten years ago? Fuck me. Fuck me. Wow, yeah, I mean, I guess that makes sense, because that was Awakening, and then we had... Uh, Awakening was around the same time as year one of Kirkwall, right? Because, yeah, I think so. So, and then we had a three-year time jump, and then we had another three-year time jump. So that was six years. And then one of the DLCs was also a one-year time jump, it said at the end. So that was seven years. And then, I guess it was another three years until Inquisition? But it can't have been three years since... Well, I guess maybe the... I guess it, we don't know exactly when Cassandra was interviewing Varric. Because it sounds like they went pretty much very quickly from that interview to the peace conference. Sounds like there wasn't much time between that interview and now. 
So I guess there must have been a bunch more time than I realized between the end of 2 and when that interview actually happened. That must have been a few years. Uh, Ferelden has not seen significant Grey Warden activity since Darkspawn attacked 10 years ago. It's not unusual for their order to fade from public notice when there's no blight. However, recent reports claim that, that a group was traveling along the northern coastline. Wardens tend to follow their own agenda, but the breach has no doubt caught their attention. If they know something, then the Inquisition should find out. Secrets. The Wardens are reclusive, but not untraceable. If there are signs of their passage on the Storm Coast, my agents will find them. Uh, connections doesn't participate, forces doesn't participate, power cost 4, let's do it. Sister Leliana, Lieutenant Harding led a small complete compliment, uh, compliment rather, compliment, what the fuck am I on about, I'm reading it like it's French or something, uh, compliment of soldiers to the Storm Coast region to investigate reports of Grey Warden activity. She sent word that her party had established a camp near the shore, but we've received nothing further. At this time, the status of Harding and her mission remains unknown. Huh. New area unlocked, though. Storm Coast. No, not yet. Um. We completed that. Uh. Is there any other ones that cost something? Uh, this costs something. Rescue soldiers missing in Ferelden. Inquisition soldiers have gone missing in the marshy reaches of southern Ferelden. Because the region is largely uncharted, finding them will be difficult, but the Inquisition's advisors are determined to find out what happened, and if possible, bring their people back alive. Okay. Uh, that costs eight. Send my people. A few scouts will move more quickly than a larger group could. Uh, if I contact the local band, she can send out search parties for the missing soldiers right away. Or other soldiers are volunteering to search for their lost comrades. They won't rest until they fi found them. Hmm. What would be best here? I don't know if this actually makes a difference. Like, it sounds like it does, but... Uh, hmm. I don't know. I feel like sending more soldiers when soldiers have gone missing. These, it, just might, it might just mean these soldiers also go missing, you know? Uh Hmm Feel like maybe secrets would be best. They can, it's scouts, they can see if they can find out what happened and then we can go and rescue them maybe or Eh, maybe connections. Let's do connections. Uh, the missing soldiers have been found in a bog called the Fallow Mire. They are being held hostage by a VAR who demand to meet the Herald of Andraste if the Inquisition wants to see its people alive again. Oh shit. Another new area unlocked. Okay. Jesus. There's so many new areas. What the fuck? Uh, okay. Uh, did I... So there was nothing I wanted to send What's-Her-Face on, right? Everything is quicker if I send other people. But then, it's also... Hmm. I could ask a friend in Antiva City to look into this matter, I suppose. Uh, I feel like Leliana's just the best for this. So, there's nothing I want to send Josephine out on at the moment, is there? I want to send Leliana on this one as well. Uh, and what was this one again? Oh, I want to send Cullen on that one. Oh wait, there's something else there I missed. What's this? Oh, that's the gather coin one. Uh, 48 minutes, huh? Well, you're significantly shorter on that, so sure. Go gather coin. At your service. And that was it, right? Oh, I mean there's the main quest one, but like... I don't know if we should do that now. Like, there's so many that we just unlocked like four other areas or some shit. Like, I don't know whether we should do those areas and then do main quest. Like, I normally do all other things before main quest, but in this game, it seems like the other things is like an absolute fucking ton. But that's normally what I prioritize. Is like, if this is the way to actual main story progress, then I complete as much else as I can beforehand. Uh, this only has a minute and a half left. That makes me want to just fucking sit here and wait for a minute and a half. But, like, that's boring as shit. I don't want to be forced to wait, but I, like, it would be... If I don't, then that's 
like a waste of time because like I'm I won't be able to send her on a new thing. So all the time that I don't have her sent on a new thing will just be like waiting. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I I feel like this this table thing kind of sucks. I mean the the power part is fine. The ones that don't take time, like it's it's these ones that take power, the pyramid looking ones. These ones take power. That's fine. That works. But these ones that take like whatever. Uh not so sure. Not so sure they're well thought out to take actual time. But it's like there's no reason for it because the reason for actual time things to exist in like mobile games is because that's how they suck money out of you. But they're not even they're not trying to do that in this game, which is good, but that means it's absolutely pointless to have actual timers attached to it. I was really hoping that I could fucking talk about that for an extra 20 seconds, but I guess we're all going to sit here and fucking rub our hands together in glee as we wait for the timer to count down. Oh yeah. Excitement. We're enjoying these timers. Hell fucking yeah. Come on. Come on, you can do it. Come on, you've got this Leliana. And she crosses the finish line. Fantastic stuff. Dalen, Andran Atishan. It does my heart well to hear that you are safe. Our clan was visited by members of the Inquisition who spoke persuasively of the good work you're doing as well as the fairness with which our kind have been treated by the Inquisition itself. You know that Clan Lavellan has little by way of gold, but I gave the messengers some of our healing herbs as Silas blessed us with an abundance in our recent foraging. We would be a distraction if we came to the Inquisition itself, our hunters arguing with the humans as they so easily do. Nevertheless, if you need aid, send word and we are with you. Dareth Shiral, Keeper Istimathriel Lavellan. Blood Lotus 10. Okay. Wonderful. Fantastic. All right. Uh, now get yourself out on this one, I guess. 11 minutes. Let's see what we have. So does that mean I should now just go and do something for 11 minutes and then come back? I guess it does. But that's like, I can't get anything meaningful done in 11 minutes, can I? What the fuck? Wait, Josephine is ready to report in? Oh, wait, no, this is... Oh, no, that's just telling me the fucking, like, the mount ones I did that were insta-complete. Is that everything? Yes. All right. Uh, codex? Creatures? Oh, that's what the dots are for, is because you can find more about them. Right. I see. Okay. Foot soldier, got an update. Dragonling. Newly hatched dragons are roughly the size of a deer and voraciously hungry. They live for a short time in their mother's lair before venturing out on their own to fuck me up. The slender, willing, wingless creatures are born in vast numbers and as only a few survived adulthood. Uh, yes, right, cool. Shade. Wraith. Uh, groups. What new group do we have? The Pentagasts. Allow me to correct you on one important point, my friend. The Pentagasts are Nevara. Without us, this nation would either still be one of the motley city-states that comprise the Free Marches, or under Orlesian control. More likely the latter, as only Nevara's strength holds back the Empire's expansion. And by that I refer to the brilliance of Pentagast generals and the influence of Pentagast coin. I find it interesting that you mention dragon hunting as our only significant trait. You do understand, I hope, that dragons disappeared centuries ago, only recently returning at the beginning of this age. Some of our clan have taken up the old trade out of nostalgia, my cousin Ferdinand the most prominent among them, but those days are largely done. Today there are 14 branches of the family, 18 if one counts our relations among the Van Markhams, each consisting of multiple families and twisting bloodlines connecting us to almost every major house across Thedas. I'm fully aware that King Marcus wanes in health, and neither he nor Ferdinand have children, but make no mistake, there will be another Pentagast sitting on the Navaran throne, and that man or woman will lead us into and that man or woman will lead us into a prosperous future. There will be no civil war. There is no war in Barsing, say. The seekers of truth aren't Templars, not precisely. They were once called once they were called the Inquisition, but upon the signing of the Navaran Accord they gave up that name and became the order they are now, standing over the us Templars as watchers and enforcers. I honestly cannot claim to know more than that. I don't know how many seekers there are, a few dozen? If they have a base of operations, I don't know where it is. Certainly not with any of us. The only time we'll see one is when a seeker is summoned, perhaps in response to a complaint by one of the first enchanters. They'll investigate the problem, 
and if it turns out a Templar did something they don't like, he's disciplined. Severely. Without question. Even the Knight Commander bows to their will. If a Seeker of Truth shows up, you know every last Templar is sweating, hoping their gaze doesn't fall on him. Of course, that changed when the Navarran Accord was broken. I'm told the Chantry broke it, but it was Lord Seeker Lambert who made the announcement. He said the Seekers of Truth and the Templar Order were going to hunt rebel mages, no matter what the Divine commanded. I didn't know he had that authority, that he could just say we would do this and everyone would follow, but we did. I never thought of it that way, but the Seekers have always been our guides. Now they've led us into war. That's it for that. Places... Um... Navarra. The fourth time I attempted to cross the border into Navarra for Morlaix and was turned back by Chevaliers, I decided to take the more roundabout path, a ship back to Ferelden, and then another to Navarra. The outcome was more than worth the trouble. The whole country is filled with artistry, from the statues of heroes that litter the streets in even the meanest villages to the glittering Golden College of Magi in Cumberland. Perhaps nowhere is more astonishing than the vast necropolis outside Navarra City. Unlike most other followers of Andraste, the Navarans do not burn their dead. Instead, they carefully preserve the bodies and seal them in elaborate tombs. Some of the wealthiest Navarans begin construction of their own tombs while quite young, and these become incredible palaces, complete with gardens, bathhouses and ballrooms. Utterly silent, kept only for the dead. Yeah, weird tradition, bruh. Uh, we read the Fade, we haven't read this. The Fallow Mire. This is one of the places we just unlocked, right? I spent the last week in the Fallow Mire. The bog stretches forever, and it's slow riding at night when the mists get thick. You can still travel along the old roads, and there's enough good hunting to make the trip worthwhile. Fish, birds, even a few hearts. There's one thing to look out for, though. When anything dies in the water, the mire preserves it. I was stalking a magnificent buck when a corpse clawed out of the water at me. I'm not afraid to say I ran. No rack of antlers is worth fighting a demon. My cousin in Fisher's End thought it was funny. Says he has to look out for undead every time he goes outside the village. I don't know how he stands it. Diary of a Hunter from Denerim. Uh, resources found here. Blood Lotus, Dawn Lotus, Summer Stone, Blue Vitriol. Huh. Do they all say that? No. The Forbidden Oasis. Oh wait, this one does. Anyone say Obsidian? Because I need Obsidian. Uh, the Forbidden Oasis. I met Bayard in Val Firmin. From here we will travel with the miners to the western approach. I already missed the sound of your voice, but the contract they offered will provide for us. And what is a year if I know you are waiting at the end of it? Bayard says the miners call the place the Forbidden Oasis. I feared perhaps the water was poisonous, you hear of such things, or that the area was home to one of the beasts in Joaquim's books. Bayard simply laughed and told me not to worry so much. When I asked how the oasis earned its dramatic name, Bayard replied, Don't ask about the door. Excerpt from a letter written by Saul Didot to his wife Lynette, 938 Dragon. No further correspondence was sent. Hmm. The Storm Coast. I cannot say whether the Storm Coast receives more inclement weather than any other stretch of northern Ferelden coastline. That hasn't stopped the region from boasting more than its fair share of tragic tales. If all are to be believed, rich merchant ships blanket the depths due to the follies of their proud captains. The infamous, and likely fictional pirate Denel of Sally, gave up the sea to become a Grey Warden while standing on these shores and countless young women pine for grooms lost to the waves. I witnessed nothing so fanciful on my brief sojourn to the coast. However, the area is sparsely populated, and as I watched the waking sea strike the shore, I could see why such tales are born. Brother Jenna TV. Hello, lad. Uh, that's all of those. Tales. Nightingale's Eyes. Okay, that's just a song, right? Yeah. We don't need to read the songs. Uh... Darktown's Deal, did we read this one? Yes, we did, right? This is the this is about how the Carter Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, it turns out there's a fuckload of tales that we haven't got yet, huh? <laughs> uh The Perils of Bard Life. As a Bard, you are welcome anywhere in Orlay. Doors are open to you with generous smiles. Their wearers confident that no one would falsely pretend to such a title for fear of retribution. Your slightest request is immediately seen to. Your services are expensive and yet actively sought, and those who cannot afford them beg only to not have your displeasure turn their way. One day, however, you will awaken. You will realise the smiles are false, and behind them lies revenge. At the first moment of weakness, your brother and sister bards will be unleashed upon you like a pack of hounds, and you will realise they are not your brothers and sisters at all. For all your fancy intrigue, you have spent your life creating nothing of worth. 
You have been swallowed by the web of your own deceits, and the game of which you believed yourself master, it moves on without you, uncaring. From a letter signed Sister Nightingale. Is that Liliana? I think that's Liliana. Cool. That is everything. Nice. A whole bunch of codex updated. What? Uh, sure. Uh, so what do we reckon? Do we reckon that I spent long enough reading that that people will be available to fucking send on their merry way again? Yoink. Is this done? Have Motherfucker, there's still two and a half minutes left. Several bards will play for her tomorrow night. We will have names soon enough. This really fucking sucks, because, like, it feels stupid to leave now when it is only two and a bit minutes left, and then I can send them on something else and make good use of the time. But at the same time, that means I have to sit here for two fucking minutes. And that's shit. Nobody wants to just sit for two minutes and wait until the game says that they can fucking click the button. Like, there is no point for this. I, I feel like this actively sucks. I feel like this is actively a terrible decision that they have made to have this as a thing in the game. You're 35 minutes. Uh, you are 17 minutes. You are now one and a half minutes. Like, what am I going to do for one and a half minutes? I can't, I don't know. Should I, should I give you my opinions on the game? I feel like I've given you my opinions. Wait. Oh, that's Contact Clan Ravella, and I was, forgot there was something up there. It's so dark, you can hardly see it. It's like I could try and make some fucking small talk about how I feel the game is going so far, but I feel like I give my opinions with pretty good frequency as I play the game, so I, I am sure you already know my feelings on the game so far. Think about it. Do you know what I think of the game so far? What, what do you think? What do you think my opinion is? My opinion is... It's good! I was definitely, I was definitely stunlocked when we got to Hinterlands and I realized just how large scale it is compared to anything in DAO and DA2. Uh, and I definitely think they've gone a bit overboard on the collectathon stuff. Uh, but once I was in on that, like, it is somewhat satisfying to clear the map and all that. And, like, I do like just spending time in Dragon Age's world and it's nice to have, like, there are larger areas now than ever before because, like, Dragon Age 2 especially, it didn't feel like you were spending time in a real world, particularly. Like, because everything was just a very tiny corridor that you couldn't move out of kind of thing. So it didn't feel like an actual living, breathing world. It just felt like, you know, areas made for a game, I guess. And there was a bit more openness to Dragon Age Origins for sure, but you were still fairly limited and the areas themselves weren't particularly large. So this definitely feels like a major change where it's like, now here's a huge area that would take a long time to go from one side off to the other. Uh, oh, hooray, it's finally done. I can stop talking. Uh, and by stop talking, I mean start talking some more about this instead. Your author friend is truly a mystery. Our search uncovered only a string of foreign accounts. The trail of coin led from Antiva to Tavinta to the free marches and or lay. Someone hid their tracks well, but not well enough. Your writer is in Kirkwall and remember you owe me a favor. Amulet of Power. Cool. Okay. Is that an Amulet of Power for Varric specifically? Uh, the Tan of High Ever. Uh, we want Cullen for that one, don't we? So this one is Leliana, I think. Uh, yes. Spies can harass the refugees into moving somewhere else. Sorry, refugees, but like... You know, gotta do what you gotta do, I guess. There are plenty of places... Like, come here. <laughs> we're taking refugees right now. We're, we're sheltering people. We're all good, you know? Let's see what we have. Okay, so you can do that. That's 19 minutes. And then I don't need to send anyone else out anywhere, do I? Okay. Uh, all right, let's fast travel to the Black Emporium then. Uh, come along, Varric, Cassandra, and Solus. And let's see if it looks any different from Dragon Age 2. Nope, this is looking pretty much the same. As quick as you'd like. There we go. 
Yeah. Wow, this looks exactly the same, just very much higher definition. Wow, this looks so much higher definition. That's crazy. And we got like birds in cages and shit. And... Oh, it's such a prettier Will version. Antagonize Chauncey the tiny bear. He may be small, but he nips. Okay. Xenon the Antiquarian. I left the Black Emporium empty handed for two reasons. First, most of the items were priced far beyond what I could afford. Second, I spent most of my short time there trying to sate my curiosity about its proprietor. I found myself stealing glances at the Antiquarian from behind piles of books, between shelves and at one point over a basket of mismatched socks. There he sat, petrified, in the centre of the Emporium, skin of waxy grey over ancient taut sinew, moaning in a voice so dry and brittle it sounded like the snapping of twigs after a drought. A girl of not more than twelve scurried to and fro to fulfil his numerous requests, Another patron noticed my fascination and told me that the girl, most likely an urchin rescued from the street, was responsible for the needs of the antiquarian, feeding, washing and the like. So impossibly old is he, and so fragile his skin, he can only tolerate the barest whisper of touches from the smallest and most tender of his servants. Only in this way may he come close to his lost youth, said the man. I was, fat I was surrounded by objects of legend, yet none fascinated me as did the antiquarian. From a journal page found in Kirkwall's Darktown written by an unknown author. Alright, well, let's have a look around. There's usually stuff to see. There's the Mirror of Transformation. It looks a lot fucking bigger than it did before. Does it just take you into the Change Your Appearance screen? Yes, it does. Uh, save changes and exit? I haven't changed anything. But yes. Yeah. Yeah. I liked your old nose better. I didn't change my nose, so that's a weird thing to say. Hello. Are you the tiny bear? I can't. I want to pull the camera down to look at him Help in the face, but it won't let me. A suck from the basket, but only one. Uh, what are you selling? Oh my God, seventeen thousand. Okay, you're selling. You're selling incredible shit. Level eighteen, right? Masterwork staff grip, masterwork staff blade, master spirit rune. Fucking hell, it's over a hundred DPS more. With 41% crit bonus. Jesus, fuck. Alright. Ernest Artelli lost his voice permanently due to a terrible fever during his tenure as prelate of the Order of Mortal Ta Mortalitasi in 745 Storm. This forced Artelli to find other ways to communicate with his fellow death mages, including writing on a small slate, hand gestures, and most frequently, angrily shaking his staff at subordinates who failed to attend to his instructions quickly enough. The last had the unintended consequence of occasionally setting fires in the vicinity. More than one acolyte fled the irritated prelate's uh, offices with charred robes. By 747, every mortalitasi in Navarra knew to watch the prelate's staff for signs of the Ernest's, for signs of Ernest's imminent reprisal. For, what is that? What? I feel like I'm having a fucking brain fart as I read that last sentence. For signs of Ernest's imminent reprisal? Is his name Ernest? Oh, it is his name's Ernest. Okay, there we go. That was what I was wondering. Uh, a maul, a bow, an axe, a uh, thingy, <laughs> whatever the fuck this is. Uh, a dagger, right. I mean, should I read all the descriptions? It sounds like they could have interesting descriptions, but they're all kind of long. And I don't super care, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> uh... A unique shield with 33 rating. Hmm. I guess shields. If if a level 18 shield has only 33 rating, then like I guess shields really don't get very high, huh? Although 10% chance to inflict chain lightning damage at 75% weapon power. That is pretty crazy, I think. Hmm. Uh, marks of smiths of Halam Sharal. From the second and last elven kingdom, gentle curves and knots in its design were made to evoke the beauty of nature of leaves and petals. Inscribed on the shield's inner lip is the elven phrase Suladin Gilana Hanin. However, close inspection reveals inexpertly made scratches on the word Suladin, proving that the phrase originally read Sulavin. Okay, I don't know what the difference is, but sure. Um, nothing for sale there. You've got fucking belts. Wait, really? A belt that only has... 5% magic, melee, and range defense is worth 15,000? Is it- is 5% that fucking big? I mean, this one- what? This one's 15% and is the same price. 100 maximum health and 10% heal boneless. 
Strength and Constitution, Dex and Cunning, Magic and Willpower. Oh shit, well that I want. 15,000 though. But Magic and Willpower I absolutely want. Uh, armor Penetration Guard, uh, Crit, Chance and Damage, and 5% Attack, 10% Barrier. Hmm. Well, I sure as shit can't afford any of that. Schematics of Legend. The Sullivan Blade. What the fuck is this shit? I didn't just accidentally... No, okay. It just makes that sound even though I don't, you don't have the cash. Uh, you can't examine it or anything. It's all greyed out, so... Like, how am I supposed to know if a Staff of Corruption is any good? Like, sounds cool, but I can't examine it to see what it would give me or anything, so why would I spend a ton of money on it if I don't know? It might just be shit. Hmm. Uh, schematics? Crafting materials? I need obsidian. It costs 84. That's five. That's five obsidian. I don't know where else I'd get it from, so... Wait, what? Only one out of five? I bought five. Oh, there we go. It updated. Uh, schematics. Oh, this is just more of this stuff, right? A whole lot of that stuff. Wait, but it was all kind of cheap, actually. Masterwork Mall. I don't know about that. That's the only ex super expensive one. Uh, Magister Staff. Like, what? could this be any better than what I've got? I have no idea. I feel like this system isn't great, because I don't know why I'd spend a ton of cash and a ton of resources making something that might just be worse than what I've already got. Not sure that system Who works. Pet the tiny bear? But be gentle, the Magister miniaturized him specially at great cost. Can I see your the face? answers to Chauncey. Hey Chauncey, where are you at? He was around here before. Hey Chauncey, can I pet you? I can't pet him. There was a ton of like, uh, codex stuff in here when we were in here before, but now there's nothing except stuff to buy, I guess. Oh well, off we go. Uh, the Black Emporium. Is that where Kirkwall is then? That's Kirkwall's symbol, right? Yeah. So it's just opposite from the Storm Coast. Interesting. Uh, I guess we marked seeing red as our thing, and that's why it's got the thing on it. Uh, that's for the Forbidden Oasis. We're definitely going to be unlocking more things over there. They wouldn't have all of Orlais and just have the Forbidden Oasis. Um, that's Haven, uh, this is the Fallow Mire. I don't know what I should do. Uh, didn't expect to have a bunch of options open up to us like this. I guess let's try the Storm Coast. Although actually, I say that, I say that, but, uh, Wait, what? Why do I have to pick people when I'm going to Haven? <laughs> um, I say that, but it's pretty much time to end the episode, which means that by the time I record the next one, it'll be time to do more on the board. Uh, the War Room board. So I guess we should end off here so that we can start next time by going to set the War Room board stuff going, and then uh, when we're done with that, we then go to, I guess, the Storm Coast. Sounds like a plan. Sounds like a plan. All right. Well, that is it for now. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed. If you have, if you could leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Share the videos around. Share the playlist around if you can. I would really appreciate that. And I'll see you next time for more Dragon Age Inquisition. Thanks for watching. See you then.